Welcome to the Insight 250 Spotlight series, where we dive deep into the world of insights as we bring you the brightest minds from around the globe. Discover the stories behind the discoveries as we spotlight the very best in the industry. I'm Crispin Bill, Insight 250 CEO. I'm joined by Kristen Lark, Insight Industry Veteran, to discuss the rapidly growing and competitive entertainment streaming industry. Kristen has worked with a variety of entertainment companies and studios over her career. So hi, Kristen. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, hi, Kristen. Thanks for having me. Brilliant. Streaming is a dynamic and competitive industry. How would you assess the state of the market today? Yeah, I mean, I think it's evolving still. You know, when you um, when you think about the streaming market in terms of subscribers, I think that the, the streaming race has always been, you know, what they call sort of a two-horse sprint. Um, between Disney and, and Netflix. And Netflix and Hulu were pretty much the only streamers in town before Hulu, um, Hulu's majority owner, Disney, came out with Disney Plus, which I think was in November of 2019. Um, and so, you, you know, if you kind of look at, at, at those two players historically, Disney and, and Netflix, if, you know, there's been some back and forth there, you know. But, you know, I think Disney's always um, touted their total subscription subscriptions, but I think it's worth noting that subscriptions are not the same as subscribers. Um, you know, if you look at, at Disney, their total streaming subscriptions include Hulu and ESPN Plus versus Netflix that doesn't have multiple services to bundle. So I would say those are the two biggest players that I kind of keep my eye on from a usage perspective. So Kristen, is brand tracking different in the world of streaming where you're dealing with individual episodes and individual shows that are far faster moving than in a traditional Adam brand tracking world? You know, working on entertainment tracking and then starting to work in CPG. And I remember uh, one of the studio heads telling me, oh, you know, it's really, you know, the same as entertainment tracking. It just, you're dealing with a product in CPG that has a much longer life cycle. So in entertainment, obviously we're, you know, we're tracking, you know, how um, um, a movie or a show is uh, attracting interest, how, how, you know, how awareness is growing of it leading up to its release or launch, whether that's on a streaming platform or um, in, in a theater. For the most part, what you're doing is you're, you know, tracking how effective the advertising is and whether or not that's going to drive a great opening for a movie or, you know, a, you know, something on a streaming platform prior to its release. So it's just a much more dynamic space from a tracking perspective. Yeah, I, and I guess it's even harder as well, where unlike a traditional car or chocolate bar or product that you're tracking, here the big studios are trying to reach out to all of the different age ranges, the different countries, the different demographics. And so I, I guess staying on top of all of that data is absolutely fundamental. Yeah, I mean, I do think you know, one of the the benefits that streaming services have now is that they do have the ability to collect a lot of passive data on who's watching or, you know, who's, um, you know, downloading or um, interested in, in certain programs. And there's just this incredible wealth of data about subscribers or content and who's, you know. Yeah, it certainly, it certainly is. And, and how do you see the space evolving in the future, Kristen? Um, you know, I mean, I think like a lot, a lot of other sectors, I'm expecting to see more consolidation. How much, you know, it's too, you know, too soon to tell, but I do think, you know, in the case of streaming, you know, you've got Netflix and Disney who are clearly, you know, way out in front of the pack. Um, I do think we'll continue to see, um, you know, more traditional um, TV outlets, like you know, obviously HBO is now rebranded HBO Plus into Max. Um, you know, you've got Paramount Plus that has come out. So, you know, all the studios now are coming out kind of with their own streaming services, but I think it's going to be very, very tough to get in front of Netflix. You know, they just, they're just so far ahead of the pack because they've had years and years of, of doing this before, you know, we got any of these other players in, in they've got first mover advantage. Yeah, you're spot on. So having that brand tracking information, the data, the insights, understanding the massive information out there is going to be absolutely critical for brands to get ahead or overtake Netflix in this space. Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing your perspective, Kristen. We really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, I'm really excited to be joined by John Sebeck, Senior Vice President at MTAB, to discuss some of the tactics that entertainment companies 
like Paramount, like Disney, like Netflix, are adopting today to understand their audiences and the competitive landscape. So thanks for joining us, John. Now, Kristen shared the elevated need for global brand tracking at streaming companies. How do you see these brands accomplishing this today, especially with this acceleration, the speed in that nature of programming content? Kristen is correct. In this competitive market, many streaming companies are taking a global perspective to help expand their subscription base and the content base for their brand. Uh, It's important to measure performance globally, but it remains just as vital uh, to understand where you rank and perform within a given market and to execute on a given strategy. So let's take a look here at a fake um, anonymized global network brand called Orchards. This is a visualization of global brand health, where you can see its KPIs are strong in South Africa and the United States. And the rest of the globe is kind of mired in the the middle. So there's work to do globally. So when we look at global health um, against competitors, you can see there are a number of players here. And our example of orchards lives a little bit in the lower left hand corner where there are a lot of other competitors so there needs to be work some work done on a global basis if i look at the regionality performance just like the previous visual showed south africa and north america are still strong but let's take a deeper dive into north america specifically the us so as we look at Orchards, I have a strength in my brand health among mature and young families, where other brands may be stronger, just as strong in family, but also superior in teens. So this may be an opportunity to expand or build your brand health among that audience. Of course, what also makes sense is to look at who your, how often your platform is used. My brand health for Orchards which is down here, will grow quite a bit if I can get subscribers who become viewers on a monthly basis, even more so on a weekly basis. And if you have enough content and build your brand enough that that you have daily use, your brand health, your subscriptions, uh, your churn is reduced. So those are some of the tools streaming companies are using to help deep dive and understand how they can continue to grow their brand health. Obviously, another way streaming companies are trying to understand their brand and market is based on the content of their programming. So as a streaming insights analyst, uh, your content all comes down to differentiating your brand. Here we're looking at a number of shows in a particular genre, all ranked in Uh, relative to how much they love the show and what each one of those shows is communicating in terms of attributes like funny, fun, clever. So one thing we can do as the analyst for Orchards is take a look at only the programming that exists for this company, Orchards. And when we select Orchards, we can see which shows resonate the most for that platform. So we saw earlier that Orchards might capitalize on looking at the teen market. Once we filter our analysis on teens, we're able to see that both the listing of shows changes order, now body empowerment and plunder are higher rated than some of the other shows that were at the top. And each one of these shows can be viewed to identify what characteristics are being communicated for each one of those shows. Thanks. That's absolutely fascinating, John. Now, look, I'm sure people are going to have lots of questions. What's the best contact details for you? Thanks, Kristen. You can reach me at support at mtab.com, and that comes directly to me. Fantastic. I'm sure lots of people will be in touch, John. Thank you very much. Well, that wraps up another edition of the Insight 250 Spotlight Series. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We appreciate it. Do like, share and follow. A huge thank you as well to our experts today, Kristen Luck and John Sevek. Now, come on, everyone. Keep innovating, keep learning and stay tuned for another edition soon.
Thanks very much.